Okay, hi friends. Uh, let us see in uh, this day 18 uh, some points regarding people reaction today. The question was like this on examination there was an isochoria. I hope you know the meaning difference in pupil size. An iso means difference, choria means pupil. And this is a scenario being shown to you. Draw slide shown in right eye, right constricts, left doesn't. Pin shown in left eye, again right constrict, left doesn't. What is the probable diagnosis? Okay, let us see some points regarding pupillary pathway, then I will tell you the correct answer. Most of you have given the answer correct, but let me tell you some important points. So, for example, what happens if you throw light in, patient is standing face to face, okay, so this is right eye, left eye. You throw light in right eye, both pupils are getting constricted. This is the normal reaction, okay. And of course, if pupil is normal, uh, both eyes are normal. If you throw light in left eye, both pupils are constricted. What is the afferent which takes the light is the second nerve. And what takes efferent is both third nerves. That's why there is a bilateral pupillary constriction that is direct positive and consensual reflex positive. What is the pathway? The pathway is like this. You know it. When you throw a light, what happens? The light goes from second nerve, optic nerve, then goes to optic chiasma. There is a crossing, then goes to optic tract. Then the, it doesn't go to lateral genic fluid, please. Then it goes to pretectal nucleus in the dorsal midbrain. From there, bilateral Edinger Vespal is stimulated. This is the afferent. From here, what these red lines are? These are Edinger Vespal is one of the nucleus of third nerve. So, third nerve comes from bilateral Edinger Vespal. To be specific, the nerve is nerve to inferior oblique. And it travels and meets the ciliary ganglion. Both ciliary ganglions are met in between, and synapse occurs at ciliary ganglion. This is point to remember. Okay? This is parasympathetic. Parasympathetic synapse occurs at ciliary ganglion. In sympathetic it does not. Then via short ciliary nerves it goes to iris sphincter muscle that constricts the pupil of both eyes. That's why there is bilateral pupillary constriction even if you throw light in one eye. Okay. So in the question let us see what happens when light was shown to for example uh, this for example this is a question like this light was shown to right eye and right was constricting means afferent is okay in the right eye and efferent is okay means right second nerve and third nerve is okay and it says that left doesn't constrict so from there only you can make it out that left third nerve efferent is having problem but still to confirm if you throw light in the same situation in the left eye left was not constricting but right was constricting means left second nerve was functioning well so it is confirmed that left third nerve palsy was the answer to today's question and of course if third nerve is causing constriction of the pupil in third nerve palsy the pupil is dilated that is one of the features of third nerve palsy and that is an isochoria but i hope you know in diabetes and hypertension the pupil remains normal in third nerve palsy i'll tell you there is an actual uh, explanation for that but just remember for now in diabetes and hypertension pupil is normal and that is a medical cause. In surgical causes of third nerve palsy, pupil is dilated. Okay, because the fibers in, in microangiopathy, diabetes, hypertension, the fi pupillary fibers are periphery in third nerve. While in diabetes, hypertension, only the vasa nervosum, which which covers, which supplies the center part of third nerve, is affected. So peripheral fibers, pupil fibers are spared in diabetes and hypertension. That is the reason for pupil sparing third nerve palsy in diabetes and hypertension. But in surgical causes. This is the third nerve, the trauma comes from above, tumor aneurysm comes from above. So surgical causes, the pupil fibers are affected because they are peripheral. That is the cause of surgical cause, pupil is dilated. In third nerve palsy, medical cause, pupil is normal. So that is the answer for today. Left third nerve palsy is the answer. Okay. But if I tell you some more points regarding pathway defects. Let us see one more uh, video like this. You throw light in uh, right eye, what is the reaction? Both pupils are constricting. From here, you can make out that right second nerve and right third nerve is okay. And also, you can make out the left third nerve is also okay. Okay? Let us continue. Now, you change. You throw light in the left eye. What is happening? The left is not constricting. Even the right is not constricting. Then, automatically shows that the left second nerve is having problem. That is happening when the left second nerve is absolutely damaged. Total optic atrophy or total transaction. That is known as total afferent pupillary defect because it is total total transaction total optic atrophy of the left eye so if you throw in left 
second of total atrophy or transaction if you throw light in the left eye neither of the two pupils will constrict well if you throw in same situation in right eye both pupils are going to constrict let us go last to for today one step further let us see another video like this you throw light in the right eye both pupils are constricting means right second nerve right third nerve are functioning okay and left third nerve is functioning okay all right that you can establish from here now you swing the light to the other eye and what is the result you swing and left is paradoxically dilated even the right is dilated it means that some optic nerve is still functioning means only there is a first sign or compression or nerve is inflamed only it's the first sign that is a relative defect also known as marcus gun pupil you swing this is swinging flashlight examination tested by swinging flashlight examination you swing the light to the affected eye paradoxically it is a, uh, dilated and you are swinging the light from the normal eye that's why it is also dilated because the left second nerve does not have the capacity to keep on constricting again and again so early early compressions early neuritis there is rapd well afterwards when the total optic nerve is atrophied or transacting there is tapd and that is rapd is diagnosed by swinging flashlight examination like i showed in the video all right so that is some afferent and efferent defects in the pupil maybe if there is some time i'll tell you some more points regarding more pupil reactions all right thank you very much thanks for listening